In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Seek, serve, love. Of course, you know that's in the baptismal covenant, and you know what the answer is. I will with God's help. So, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Yes, we will. But... How will we live? How will we love and serve as disciples and followers of Jesus? How will we be faithful to that? Uh, in the stories over the past weeks, we've learned that it's not an easy thing. And through our own experience, we know that it's not an easy thing. Being a disciple of Jesus is always a choice. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't just happen. It is a choice. And it's often a choice which has to be made over and over again. Again, we learn that in Scripture, and that is our personal experience. I mean, look at the original 12 and the stories that we've been hearing over the past several weeks. This is the discipleship section in the Gospel of Mark. And the whole focus for these weeks has been on how, how are you a disciple? Focusing on those 12 disciples. And as you know, they didn't get it right the first time. Almost always they didn't get it right by the first time. And, and they had to keep trying and correct it and trying. And where we are now is that, and again have been for several weeks, is D Jesus is walking to Jerusalem. And we know what's going to happen there. And he's telling the disciples what's going to happen there. That he will be killed. And that he will rise from the dead. He keeps telling them that. But they don't get it. Remember a few weeks ago when instead of really listening to Jesus, they argued who was the greatest. But um, Jesus told them that's not what it's about. Following him, following Jesus as a disciple is more about coming to him with humil humility, not with pride. And in today's gospel, um, James and John start arguing about where they're going to sit in glory. I mean, I guess they get the message that uh, Jesus will rise again from the dead, and therefore he will be glorified, but that's not what they're really thinking. They're thinking about Will they have places of prestige in the life to come? Choosing to follow Jesus is something we do again and again. And that's also what we've been talking about in adult formation in this course, which is called Way of Love. It's being encouraged among all Episcopal congregations. It was begun by our presiding bishop. And every week we look at a practice like learn, pray, worship, a part of our faithful journey. And take a look at how can we do that more fully, more faithfully, so that we can be even more faithful in our discipleship and following of Jesus. And the first one we looked at a few weeks ago was about turn. We are called, again, to turn and turn back to Jesus. But, but how? You know, what's, what's a way? So when we talk about this in formation, what's a way? What's a reminder? What's a, a way that it can click in our heads and our hearts that I want to get back focused on Jesus, who I've chosen to follow? So during that week, several weeks ago, we each sort of thought about it. I want to share with you what I, well, I didn't come up with it. It just sort of popped into my head. Um, it's about dogs. Not puppies, but dogs. So my routine is that I get up at 6 o'clock and take the dogs out to do their business and then come in, they get fed, 
and then they're all happy. They go out for a little bit more. They come back in. They gather them out around me right there at the, uh, the chair I'm sitting in, and they sort of we sort of snuggle. And the strangest thing happened. All of a sudden, I was looking at them, and by the way, it's Hazel, Colleen, and Hannah. Hazel, Colleen, and Hannah. Hannah is the mother. Colleen, two years, two and a half years old. No, how old is Colleen? <laughs> so, and, and, and Hannah is the brand new one. But anyway, here's what I did. I put my, I put my hands around Hazel's face, and I looked in her eyes, and I said, I love you. I'm going to take care of you. I see God in your eyes. And then I went to Colleen. I love you. I want to take care of you. And I see God in your eyes. Then I went to Hannah. I love you. I'm going to take care of you. And I see God in your eyes. And what I realized was how blessed I was to get that idea to, for it just came out of nowhere. Because that's, what, that's the kind of thing I do every morning anyway, but to use that practice of touching that dog and saying that I love and serve and see that dog as holy, it changes everything. I mean, I had a great feeling when I did that, and um, I think they did too. They sort of smiled. And for now, it's, is some, it is a way that I can do. It's, it's a thing that I can do. It's a way that I can reorient myself in the craziness of my daily life. And I touch them and remind myself of my relation to them, how it is based on love and service and God. Turn again and again, we're called to do again and again, turn. And in the gospel for today, Jesus said, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. This is the one that focusing, focuses on serve, a way in which we can reach out. And the thing about this, you see, is that one of the, one of the great truths about our faith is that we can get closer to Jesus sometimes by not being so set within our own world. One way to get more close to Jesus is to look at somebody else and celebrate that relationship with somebody else or some other being, which is a part of God's creation. Servant ministry, which comes exactly from this phrase, we're called to be servants and not to be served. Servant ministry, for instance, like the wood ministry that's listed in the bulletin, um, it's not simply an act, a compassionate act responding to a need. Um, if it's done faithfully, it is an act of faith in that reaching out, in that responding to a need. We, in fact, can feel God's presence if we claim it as an act of faith, of reaching to the other, of reaching out. And I will... I will never forget uh, last summer when the youth group came back from their mission trip to South Carolina, and several of them got up here and witnessed. And most of them were witnessing to exactly what I'm saying, how participating in an act of servanthood really, made, really helped them feel closer to God, how reaching out to the poor and realizing that they were on a church trip really help them feel closer to God. I believe that. However, just like the disciples, those original 12, we in this culture are fascinated with power, prestige, possessions, and winning. It's just a part of human nature throughout the ages, throughout the world. And we argue about it, just like the disciples in today's gospel and two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So how do we remember? What can we do to make 
our commitment to follow Jesus, more will. What's a practical thing we can do? I'm going to take a leap of faith here and make a suggestion. And I'm interested, as ha I'm interested in your response. So what if, what if you did this? What if we did this? What if when we felt caught in some sort of conflict, what if we felt really demolished by some sort of comment? If, what if we feel really left out? What if we feel really angry at somebody, so angry we could punch them or something? I mean, what if, what if we were in that place? What's something we could do to say, wait a minute, you said you were going to follow Jesus. Well, what about this? It takes me back to Hazel, Colleen, and Hannah. What if, in your imagination, what if in our imagination, when we felt what's called an evil spirit, a dark spirit, what if when we felt that, in our imagination, we could hold that person's face right there in front of us? In our imagination, we could look at that person's eyes, whether it's somebody we know or somebody, you know, across the world, but we, in our imagination, look in that person's eyes and say, I love you. I'm going to serve you. And I see Jesus Christ in your eyes. What if we did that? Here's what I think, what if. I think it, cha it will change the way we feel about that person. Don't know about that person. He or she will have to take care of her own problems. But what we have, been what we have committed to is to walk with Jesus in the way of love. So it's our responsibility to get reoriented again and again to that place of love which Jesus taught. Now, maybe that suggestion is a little out there. But I want you to try it. I want you to try it. Because I believe it can make a difference. In other words, we who claim our faith in Jesus Christ are just walking a lie, living a lie, if we don't really act on it. If we just sort of nod to it and agree to it, it's, it's not that. I mean, Christianity is a, is a communal religion. It's an incarnational religion. It's lived out in the way we do things, how we speak and how we act. So in this era of fear and division throughout the world, in this very challenging time throughout the world, may we all be reminded that God loves us and other people too. The key, as always, is all about relationships. So, as people who have committed ourselves to Jesus, how will we choose to make our relationships with others ones of faith and love and service? Because we know that Jesus Christ loves and serves us. Amen.